What if we could bring back extinct animals? Imagine the possibilities. The creatures that once roamed the earth, now lost to time. What if they could return? The idea of resurrecting extinct species is more than just science fiction. Advances in genetics and de-extinction research have opened up exciting possibilities. But could they actually thrive? Could these animals adapt to the world we live in today? And what kind of impact would they have on our ecosystems? Today we're exploring seven extinct animals that could potentially thrive if they were brought back into today's ecosystems. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like and comment below. Let me know which extinct animal you think should come back. Let's get started with our first extinct animal, an ancient giant that might hold the key to fighting climate change. First up, we have the mighty woolly mammoth. These massive creatures once roamed the earth during the Ice Age, their long, shaggy fur protecting them from frigid temperatures. But what if the mammoth could be brought back? Could this massive herbivore survive in today's world? Thanks to groundbreaking genetic research, scientists are now working on de-extincting the mammoth by using DNA from well-preserved specimens found in the Siberian ice. But it's not just about bringing the mammoth back for curiosity's sake. Many believe reintroducing them could actually help tackle climate change. You see, mammoths were natural grassland managers. By grazing on tundra plants, they would prevent the overgrowth of shrubs, allowing grasses to grow instead. This process is known as trophic rewilding. Scientists believe that if mammoths were to return, they could help preserve the permafrost by preventing the expansion of trees, which in turn could release less methane into the atmosphere. The mammoth's cousin, the modern-day elephant, already plays a similar role in their environments by knocking down trees and creating open grasslands. Mammoths could do the same on a much larger scale. By reintroducing them to places like the Arctic, these living time machines could help restore balance in an ecosystem that has shifted dramatically over the last 10,000 years. While it may seem like a far-off dream, bringing back the mammoth could provide us with more than just a cool story. It could offer solutions to some of the most pressing issues of our time. Next, we meet one of the most iconic predators to ever roam the earth, the saber-toothed tiger. With its terrifying fangs and muscular frame, this apex predator was a force to be reckoned with. But could this terrifying predator survive if it were brought back today? Let's break it down. Apex predators like lions and wolves are essential to maintaining balance in ecosystems. They help control populations of prey species, preventing overgrazing and allowing vegetation to thrive. Sabertooths were likely doing the same. Their hunting strategies would have controlled the populations of large herbivores, ensuring the ecosystem didn't become overburdened by one species. Fast forward to today, and we can see the effects of missing apex predators. Overpopulation of prey animals, like deer, can lead to a lack of vegetation and an imbalance in the ecosystem. Reintroducing predators like the saber-tooth could have a similar effect to what we've seen with wolves in Yellowstone, restoring balance, preventing overgrazing, and allowing biodiversity to flourish. The return of a creature like the saber-tooth could help maintain equilibrium, especially in ecosystems that have struggled with invasive species or imbalanced predator-prey relationships. While the saber-tooth's size and ferocity would make it a top predator, it would likely fit into the modern-day ecosystem in much the same way other big cats do, acting as a key player in food chains. But of course, the real question is, would we be able to coexist with such a powerful creature once again? Could we recreate an environment where these predators could thrive alongside us? Next, we travel to the islands of Mauritius, where one of the most famous extinct birds once lived, the dodo. This flightless, curious bird is often the symbol of extinction, but could it thrive again today? The dodo was a herbivore, feeding on fruits, seeds, and roots. It had no natural predators on its island, which is part of what made it so vulnerable to extinction after humans arrived. However, some of the birds that evolved in similar island ecosystems have adapted well to conservation efforts today. If we were to bring the dodo back, could it survive in a world without its original predators? 
Reintroducing a species like the dodo would need careful planning. Protected environments or controlled rewilding programs could help ensure its survival, similar to efforts to bring back species like the kakapo. One of the most important roles the dodo could play is seed dispersal. Its diet of fruits and seeds means it would have helped maintain the health of its environment, spreading plant life and fostering biodiversity. In fact, the dodo may have evolved to help certain species of plants by dispersing their seeds, creating a natural cycle of regeneration in the ecosystem. Bringing the dodo back could help restore some of these ecological processes, as long as we ensure it has a safe environment where it can thrive, without the threat of human interference or invasive species. While it's unlikely the dodo would return to its original home in Mauritius, protected areas or new conservation efforts could offer this extinct bird a second chance to once again thrive. Next, we head to Australia, home of the enigmatic Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine. Once considered a fierce predator of the island's wilds, this creature was lost to history in the 20th century. But could it make a comeback? The thylacine was a top carnivore in Tasmania, hunting small to medium-sized mammals, birds, and reptiles. But it vanished, primarily due to hunting and habitat destruction caused by humans. Today, Tasmania still has predators, such as the dingo, but the role of the thylacine remains unfilled. Could it return to help balance the ecosystem again? One of the biggest problems in Australia today is the overpopulation of invasive species, like rabbits, which damage crops and ecosystems. The return of the thylacine could help reduce these invasive populations, acting as a natural predator to species like rabbits and helping to restore balance to Australia's ecosystems. In fact, reintroducing apex predators like the thylacine has been successful in other parts of the world. Think of wolves in Yellowstone, where the reintroduction has led to healthier ecosystems. While bringing back the thylacine faces many challenges, such as ensuring it doesn't negatively impact the environment or local communities, genetic scientists are exploring the possibility of using advanced techniques to resurrect the thylacine. With the right precautions and in the right environment, the thylacine could help regulate populations of small animals and potentially even assist in managing the land's natural vegetation. The thylacine could be a key to restoring the ecological balance of Tasmania, if we can provide it with the space and care it needs to thrive in a world very different from the one it once knew. Next, we turn our attention to one of the most abundant birds to ever grace North America, the passenger pigeon. Once numbering in the billions, these birds filled the skies, but they vanished nearly a century ago. Could they ever return? The passenger pigeon was a spectacle of nature. These birds traveled in flocks so large they would darken the sky, migrating across vast distances in search of food and nesting grounds. However, relentless hunting and habitat destruction led to their extinction in the early 20th century, and with it, the loss of a species that had once shaped the landscape. However, relentless hunting and habitat destruction led to their extinction in the early 20th century, and with it, the loss of a species that had once shaped the landscape. Birds like the passenger pigeon played an essential role in maintaining forest health. As they fed on seeds and fruits, they spread them across great distances, allowing plants to grow in new areas. In the absence of the passenger pigeon, some ecosystems have struggled to maintain the delicate balance of plant life, with fewer natural seed dispersers around. Today, scientists believe that reintroducing the passenger pigeon could help revive some of these processes. With the right steps, we could bring back these incredible birds and restore their vital role in ecosystems. Imagine what it would look like, skies filled once again with the flutter of wings, and forests thriving thanks to the return of an ecological keystone species. While the path to bringing back the passenger pigeon is far from simple, it's a tantalizing possibility, one that could help us restore a piece of natural history and the ecosystems that once depended on it. Now, let's travel to the cold waters of the North Atlantic, 
where the great auk once dominated the coastal cliffs. This flightless bird, often called the penguin of the north, was a powerful swimmer and an essential part of its ecosystem. But after centuries of hunting, the great auk was driven to extinction. Could it be brought back? The great auk was a bird like no other. It had powerful wings designed for swimming, using them to dive deep into the frigid waters in search of fish. On land, it was slow moving, but in the water, it was a master of its domain. Today, we still have seabirds like puffins and gannets that share similar ecological roles, but the great auk's absence has left a gap in the marine food chain. The great auk helped regulate marine populations by feeding on small fish and crustaceans. By reintroducing them, we could potentially restore this balance, keeping fish populations in check and supporting a healthier marine ecosystem. Our oceans face unprecedented challenges today, overfishing, pollution, and climate change. By bringing back a species like the great auk, we could potentially aid in the recovery of some of these fragile marine ecosystems. Marine rewilding is becoming an important part of conservation science. And just like we've seen with species like seals or sea otters, reintroducing a predator like the great auk could help control fish populations and encourage the growth of healthier coral reefs and marine plants. By feeding on fish and small marine life, the great auk would once again take its place in the food web, helping balance oceanic populations and fostering the growth of vital marine vegetation. The great auk could be more than just a symbol of lost opportunity. It could be the key to restoring health to our oceans if we act now and restore what we've lost. Finally, we arrive in the unique landscapes of New Zealand, where one of the most fascinating extinct birds once roamed, the moa. Standing over 12 feet tall, this giant flightless bird was an herbivore that dominated the island's ecosystems. But, much like many of the other animals we've discussed, the moa was wiped out by human activity. Could it return? The moa was a unique creature, with no natural predators in New Zealand. It was a key herbivore, feeding on a variety of plants, helping to shape the landscape. But after humans arrived, hunting and habitat destruction led to the moa's extinction around 600 years ago. Today, New Zealand's forests are vastly different. With the moa gone, certain plant species, once dependent on these birds for seed dispersal and grazing, have begun to struggle while some invasive species have flourished. The moa helped keep the balance by grazing on certain plant species and in doing so prevented the overgrowth of certain types of vegetation. Their presence also supported a variety of smaller species, from insects to small birds. Similar to modern-day herbivores like elephants and bison, the moa would have shaped the landscape by controlling plant growth. This grazing would have opened up space for a variety of species to thrive, fostering greater biodiversity. Today, New Zealand is at the forefront of conservation efforts, with ongoing projects aimed at restoring the island's ecosystems and protecting its native species. The reintroduction of the moa could play a crucial role in these efforts, helping restore ecological balance. With the moa back in the ecosystem, we could see a return to a more natural balance, grazing on certain plants, spreading seeds, and supporting the native species that rely on this delicate equilibrium. The moa, while long gone, could once again help maintain the biodiversity of New Zealand's forests. By restoring such a keystone species, we might be able to address some of the challenges facing these ecosystems today. The moa's return isn't just a dream. It's a possibility, a way for us to correct the imbalances we've caused and help restore ecosystems that have been disrupted for centuries. From the towering mammoth to the elusive moa, these seven extinct animals once played vital roles in shaping the ecosystems they lived in. The idea of reintroducing them may seem like science fiction, but with modern technology and innovative conservation methods, it's no longer a mere fantasy. 
Scientists are already making strides in genetic research, creating opportunities to bring back these creatures. But it's not just about resurrecting the past. It's about learning from our mistakes and taking action for a healthier, more sustainable future. Rewilding and de-extinction efforts have already made a difference in our world. Species like wolves, bison, and even the return of the beaver have helped restore ecosystems and bring back biodiversity. These are steps in the right direction, and the potential for even greater change is on the horizon. By reintroducing some of these lost species, we could potentially restore balance to ecosystems that have been altered by human activity. But we can't do it alone. Every action counts. So, what can you do to help? Support conservation efforts, reduce your carbon footprint, and advocate for sustainable practices. Every small step leads us closer to a future where we can preserve the wonders of the natural world and perhaps even revive them. The world has changed, but it's not too late to make a difference. Together we can build a future where extinct animals might one day roam the earth again and where our planet thrives in harmony with nature. Thanks for joining us on this journey through time and nature. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share because the future of our planet starts with us.